You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on EU support for democracy and peace in the world. As an organisation that has been able to secure peace among its member states for 70 years, the EU plays an important role by supporting and inspiring other world nations to respect the universally recognised values of human rights and democracy. But the emergence of new threats such as terrorism and nuclear proliferation, backsliding of democracies and increasing authoritarianism in many countries, and the multiplication of conflicts around the world mean that supporting peace and democracy has never been so challenging. Given this context, how should the EU strengthen its resolve? Stay with us. When in 2012 the presidents of the three main EU institutions travelled to Norway to collect the Nobel Peace Prize for helping to transform Europe from a continent of war into a continent of peace, many could not hold back tears. For more than the prize, the real reason for celebration was peace among the European countries that fought two world wars last century, over 60 years of peace, one of the longest periods in over 2,000 years. As a community of like-minded states, the European project is built on the respect of fundamental values such as democracy, human rights and the rule of law, which the Union aspires to promote both internally and externally and which guide all its policies and actions. From trade development, enlargement and neighbourhood policies to its common foreign and security policy and political and diplomatic relations with third countries and multilateral organisations. This is why over the years the EU has established a reputation as a soft power, using its own example and the magnetism of being the world's largest market to advance peace and democracy globally. But in the light of new global threats and a changing geopolitical context, is soft power still working? Well, there's certainly debate around this, but one thing is clear. The multiplication and increasing gravity and duration of conflicts, some on the EU's doorstep, the emergence of new threats such as terrorism and nuclear proliferation, and the crisis of liberal systems have driven the EU to widen and intensify its efforts. They have also led to a new vision for action revolving around the concept of resilient societies based on the mutually reinforcing pillars of peace and democracy and a special emphasis on fragile states to prevent the emergence of conflicts in the first place. For conflicts not only cost lives, they also cost money. Lots of money. According to the Institute for Economics and Peace, in 2016 alone, conflict and violence cost 12.5 trillion euros or the equivalent of 12.6% of global GDP. And just as conflicts multiply around the world, the democracy wave that spread with the end of the Cold War has subsided in the past decade. The truth is that rising economic inequalities in the aftermath of the economic crisis, coupled with the emergence of security threats such as violent extremism, terrorism and hybrid threats, as well as the difficulties of democratic governments in dealing with irregular migration, have all served to fuel citizens' dissatisfaction with democratic systems, feelings that populist parties have clearly capitalised on. Despite a certain discontent, many people in the world still favour democracy over other systems of governance and the number of EU citizens calling on the EU to be even more active in promoting peace and democracy externally is growing. But how does the EU do that? Let's have a look. The advance of democracy and preservation of peace as a fundamental principle of EU common foreign and security policy and development cooperation is deeply enshrined in the EU treaties. But this very worthy objective requires a solid financial commitment. That's why the EU sets aside part of its external financial resources to fund programmes dedicated specifically to democracy and peace. Over the past few years, 13% of total EU development aid has been granted to actions supporting government and civil society, while around 3% has supported efforts to secure peace globally. In the EU budget, the main programme aimed at advancing democracy is the European Instrument for Democracy and Human Rights, while other programmes support democracy as part of their wider objectives. The European Neighbourhood Instrument focuses on promoting human rights and the rule of law, establishing deep and sustainable democracy and developing a thriving civil society in the EU's neighbourhood. The Development Cooperation Instrument endowed with a financial envelope of over 19 billion euros over the current financial framework up to 2020 is the main financial instrument for funding aid to developing countries. Its geographical programmes must spend at least 15% of their allocated funds on human rights, democracy and good governance. And that's not all. There are other programmes, such as the instrument contributing to stability and peace, which focuses on crisis management and peace building and was recently amended to cover military capacity building in third countries too. Outside the EU budget, there's also the European Development Fund. 
To advance democracy and human rights in its external action, the EU has designed specific actions, some self-standing, some intertwined with other important policies, such as development aid, trade, and the common foreign security policy. Let's review some of them. In recent years, the EU has extended its political and diplomatic efforts in favour of democracy. For example, by including democracy issues in its political and human rights dialogues with third countries and by taking advantage of its external action service to facilitate dialogue with national authorities and local actors. In trade policy, the EU uses its leverage as the world's largest commercial bloc to promote human rights, democracy and the rule of law, including respect for these fundamental values as a precondition to access its single market. And it also makes much of its development aid conditional on respect for human rights and democratic standards. The EU is also one of the leading international organisations in the field of election observation, ensuring that national elections are free and fair, and it actively promotes engagement by civil society organisations in third countries. The European Parliament has established its own measures to support parliamentary democracy in third countries identified as priority partners for democracy assistance. These measures include facilitating dialogue and consensus building among conflicting political forces and providing guidance on election observation amongst others. In the area of peace, the EU's 2016 Global Strategy introduced the promotion of resilience and capacity building in third countries as guiding objectives of external action. The EU is also actively engaged in peacekeeping and stabilisation. Currently, it has 16 peacekeeping and military operations on three different continents, with over 6,000 civilian and military personnel carrying out tasks such as military training, capacity building and border assistance. The EU has also been involved in mediation efforts in Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, Libya and the Central African Republic. But how will all these efforts continue in the future? With more challenges but no big increase in money available, one has at the very least the right to wonder. In June 2018, the Commission published its proposal on a new external financing instrument for the period 2021 to 2027. This merges most previous external instruments into one single instrument, which should bring more financial flexibility. Content-wise, it would include four programmes on human rights and democracy, civil society organisations, stability and peace and global challenges, with a total budget of 7 billion euros. The European Parliament has called on the Commission to substantially increase appropriations for external action and it supports the direct provision of funding to civil society organisations and to human rights defenders, especially in countries where democracy is at risk. The Commission recognises that the shrinking space for civil society in many countries poses additional difficulties to democracy support. Therefore, it's necessary to identify new ways for supporting civil society in increasingly restrictive environments. Furthermore, the deterioration of the rule of law and democratic standards in several candidate countries, as well as in neighbourhood countries such as Ukraine, highlights the difficulties the EU faces when trying to support democracy. The European Parliament has repeatedly called for a firmer EU stance on democratic standards in its relations with partners. In this spirit, it has twice called for EU negotiations with Turkey to be frozen. In conjunction with the challenges to democracy, the emergence of new types of threats linked to climate change, terrorism or uncontrolled migration, the assertiveness of rogue regimes such as North Korea, increased geostrategic competition and the weakening of the US commitment to multilateralism and liberal values has profoundly reshaped the global security environment and call for responses from the EU. By its very nature, the EU remains committed to supporting peace and democracy inside and outside its own borders. But it faces the difficult task of ensuring consensus among its member states about promoting fundamental values, both inside and outside. Supporting human rights and democracy is not only a matter of principled commitment, but also has the potential to help the EU deal with its own internal political challenges. And a more peaceful and democratic world will without doubt increase Europe's own security. You're listening to European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts.